Hello, and welcome to The Lid Show. We are in a new country, but the concept is the same. Bed, microphone, deep chat, profound thoughts only in this video. I am really excited to make this video because this is something that has only recently just like clicked in my young, naive, Gen Z brain. If you had asked me a year ago, two years ago, if you had asked me two years ago, even a year ago, if I would ever say that I would enjoy the nine to five life, I would call you crazy and that, that that would never happen. But here we are. I have been in this new role for a few weeks now and I actually enjoy my life. So in today's video, I wanna discuss how maybe the nine to five is somewhat villainized by my generation which is Gen Z, and perhaps we've taken the vilification of the whole nine to five life a bit too far, and why perhaps we were wrong, and we should actually be very grateful for what we have. Anyways, I'll be getting into it. To paint a picture, I'm someone who went to business school, I've done my corporate internships, I have always had this like weird relationship where I'm like, I feel like I can do something bigger and better and more creative, but at the same time, I appreciate a stable income. And so I've always been like one step in, one step out where I'll like get the job, but then be like, ah, oh, I shouldn't fully commit myself or like I should still pursue my creative endeavors, which I'm not saying is wrong by any means, but I do think I was like a typical Gen Z, where I really was like anti the nine to five. I think especially being a COVID graduate, which meant that I graduated and entered the workforce at a really interesting time where like workers' rights, office workers' rights were being discussed and were like the main theme of like how we'll never return back to the office and like we just want work-life balance, which are really good topics, you know? But it was interesting to enter the workforce as a Generation Z person during a time when everyone was kind of just anti-corporate life and everyone was like, you should just become a TikToker instead. And a lot of people were doing that and were successful doing that. But yeah, it made me kind of feel resentful when I got my first corporate job, which in hindsight, that's probably not how I should have been feeling. I had a job as like an analyst at a pretty big company um, in North America. It was fully work from home. They were like, yeah, it's hybrid, but we probably went to the office once every three months. It was a pretty easy role. Yeah, it was like analytical, but honestly, honestly, it really wasn't. There was quite a lot of admin stuff. There was quite a lot of not creative work. I was probably looking at Excel every day. So yeah, in theory, at this entry level role, fully remote job during covid i should have been chilling i should have just been like wow i'm so grateful i get paid to like do some work that really isn't that meaningful or like that difficult um i'm not curing cancer i'm not you know using my brain that much but i'm getting funds i'm getting a somewhat livable income but i did not see it like that i saw it as like i need to remember that I'm an individual and that I am never ever going to be part of this company. It's always going to be me first and I will never do more than 40 hours a week. I will never open my laptop on the weekends. I will never work past 5 p.m. <laughs> when my boss started asking me to work at 8 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. I really was not happy and I kind of kept bringing it up in conversations that like this is strange that like I have to start work an hour earlier but still end at five, which, you know, probably that is something that you should be firm on. But still, I was not willing to budge in any way and to give any sort of leeway to this company that was literally providing me a livable income. Now, there were definitely issues at this company, okay? I did not get on with my managers. There was a really toxic relationship between her and the rest of us on the team and ultimately I got fired from that job but so did everyone else on the team so it was kind of like a strange scenario where none of us were really happy and none of us really wanted to give our all because like we just 
weren't, we were not with someone who was inspiring as a leader. And I think that also contributed to this whole problem. But since I got fired and, you know, it's now seven months later and I'm back into the workforce, I have had time to really almost reprogram my mind and my brain and everything that I thought I knew about what I wanted in life and what I wanted out of my work life, especially. I realized that, you know, maybe the nine to five is not the dream life. I don't think anyone, you know, is like, I want to be in office work for the rest of my life. But now I'm like, wow, there is a company out there that will pay five figures a year, six figures a year for me to do a job that's not changing the world. Again, I'm not curing cancer. I'm not an engineer. I'm literally using Excel. Mind you, my job right now is probably a bit more analytical than my previous one, maybe. Um, it's a lot more interesting to me. It's in a field that I'm more passionate about. I really like my team member so far. But still, I'm just purely grateful now that like, there's someone in HR who believed that like I'm worthy of several thousand dollars a month to be doing this job. Like seriously, you're only committing eight hours a day, if even, if you work from home, you know? Like seriously, you're only committing eight hours a day, five days a week, and you get paid a livable income. And I know some people now are gonna be in the comments being like, wages have not increased to match with the rate of inflation and like how everything has become so much more expensive. I know, I know. But I think it goes to show that like, I'm being paid like a good salary, but an okay salary in London for, you know, my level of work. And I'm able to survive in London, which is one of the most expensive places in the world. What are we spending our money on, Gen Z? What are we trying to afford? If you can afford rent and you can afford food and you still have money left over to like enjoy yourself here and there, what are we crying about, you know? And here's the real kicker. I now live in a country where I have 26 paid vacation days. I get paid for a month out of the whole year to go on vacation. Like, this is insane, you know? I mean, obviously, back in Canada, I was a bit more upset about this because, you know, in North America, we literally have, like, 10 days of vacation per year, which is just ridiculous. Um, so I can see, you know, I think this is something we should fight for in the U.S. in terms of office workers' rights. But if you work in Europe, what is there to complain about? <laughs> it's funny because I think there's this perception of me at the office where they're like, oh, it's the North American, like she's going to be more hardworking than any of us because she comes from a place with no vacation. And maybe that's true, but yeah, this is insane. I've only worked for a few weeks and somehow I already have four paid vacation days that they're like, you need to take them. Like you actually need to take them. I'm just mind blown. Who am I to like be complaining that like I'm getting a livable wage at least livable for my standards. Like if I'm really thinking about it, I'm only giving 11 months out of the year to this job and they're giving me so much more in return. They're even giving me private healthcare, you know, like different funds that you can use for like building a home office, for, you know, personal development. Who am I to be like, no, I'm not gonna give this company any ounce extra of my personal time. Like, no, I'm gonna have I'm gonna be rebellious and like remember that like I'm an individual and like this company means nothing to me at the end of the day. Who am I to be doing this, you know? I mean, it's interesting because I think there is a fine line where like you should have boundaries and you shouldn't be so consumed by your work that it takes over your life. And maybe you shouldn't have your whole identity tied to your work because at the end of the day, anything can happen. We can be fired. The best, most committed workers can literally be laid off for like no reason. It's possible, but I still think we need to kind of touch grass a bit and realize that like we really don't have it that bad. My generation really does not have it that bad, especially in a time when we're just so concerned with like human rights around the world and like everyone's situation in life in like less fortunate places. Why are we then complaining about our own situation in very fortunate places 
when we have everything, we have the ability to have work-life balance. Since COVID, honestly, companies have been very lax. We have the ability to work from home. We have paid vacation days. Like, vacation is even a concept that some places don't have. And we are here complaining that we just don't want to be part of the 9 to 5 grind. That we just are above this. We cannot all become TikTokers. Okay, please. The world needs engineers and lawyers and doctors and not TikTokers, okay? We don't need them. <laughs> you are not helping anybody. You are a clown. You are entertainment, okay? <laughs> Someone has to say it. We don't need more Instagram influencers either. Maybe we don't need more YouTubers, but I think we do, okay? <laughs> I think we also don't even need more digital marketing agencies, which all my entrepreneur friends all end up starting, and I'm like, wow, you're so entrepreneurial. You just did the same thing that all of your other entrepreneurial friends did. These friends are making a lot of income or whatever, but I mean, and some of these friends are doing really, really well for themselves. So good for them, but one day you might wake up and you might be bored from your entrepreneurial endeavors and realize that selling websites or social media advertising to companies is not what you thought your dream life was going to be when you decide to become an entrepreneur. I'm also seeing this trend now of like content creators who were in the game for a while, like think of your favorite YouTubers from 10 years ago. Where are they now? What are they doing? I think this whole lie of like, we can all just become content creators and we can all be our own boss and saying that like the nine to five is the worst thing ever is not sustainable. I'm honestly wondering if we're even meant to be doing these sort of jobs where we're just like in front of a screen filming ourselves all the time, where it's very isolating, where you're not learning any real skills even people skills, honestly. As you can see, I'm now very passionate about this topic, but I truly feel like a new part of my brain just finally like formed. And maybe it has because I'm 24 turning 25. So I think literally there's a part of my brain that's finally like turned on. Um, but now that my prefrontal cortex is developed and is developing, I truly am just like, I feel like I'm awakened. Like I'm really just like, how was I so stupid and naive before? And so full of myself that I thought I was worth more than this livable wage and 40 hours of my time. I thought I was above that. When really my work was pretty easy and I was pretty replaceable as well. So yeah, food for thought. I think this is just an interesting discussion for my generation to perhaps wake up and realize that, you know, I think we're asking too much out of the workforce, you know? Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, but I would love to know your thoughts. So please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Do you work a nine to five? Are you trying to balance being a content creator and a nine, doing a nine to five? Are you a full-time content creator? Like I'm actually very curious. Uh, so yeah, please let me know. And with that, I'll see you in my next video.